Good afternoon on today's Bulletin of the Angry Astronaut. Virgin Galactic prepares to take flight on a crucial test mission that will determine whether or not this company is going to re-enter the competitive world of space tourism and suborbital space flight, or if this company is going to go the same route of its sister company, Virgin Orbit. Is Virgin Galactic ready to go head-to-head -head with Blue Origin? And on the other side of the Atlantic, crisis continues in Cornwall in spite of all the promising new relationships that this organization has developed with very powerful space flight organizations around the world. In spite of all of the business that this spaceport promises to bring to the Cornwall region, Spaceport Cornwall has now lost its leader, Mel Quinn. Can this organization move forward in spite of losing the person who set up these promising relationships in the first place? All this and more on The Angry Astronaut coming at you right now. Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to The Angry Astronaut. Once again, I want to offer my deepest appreciation to all of you for your support in my GoFundMe page and everything that you've done to try to bring me across the Atlantic. I have reached and surpassed my short-term goal. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all of that. Now working towards the long-term goal of what will finally bring me across the Atlantic in September. Once again, don't feel obligated. It's not your responsibility to support my move, but at the same time, if it's something that you can comfortably do, I would definitely appreciate it. Let's move on with today's news. kids down there. I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. It's difficult to believe, but this was the last time that Spaceship Two made a flight into suborbital space, and I don't think anybody expected that this much time would elapse before Virgin Galactic made another flight, or indeed that another test flight would be necessary after taking the company's founder, Richard Branson, into suborbital space. Yes, there were a couple of small hiccups during this flight, but overall it went extremely well. Nevertheless, Virgin Galactic decided that it was necessary to give the ship a complete overhaul and also to introduce a brand new ship at the same time before the company entered the world of competitive suborbital spaceflight with all cylinders firing. Well, that seemed like a good enough plan at the time and nobody was that concerned about it until all of this started happening. Welcome back everyone. Uh, it appears that Launcher 1 has suffered an anomaly which will prevent us from making orbit for this mission. Uh, we are looking at the information and data that we have uh, gotten um, and we'll be back with you in a moment with more. The saddest of news has come. The news that we've been all fearing for a, uh, a while now and uh, here it is. What are we going to do? Virgin Orbit has collapsed. Oh yeah. Storage Area 9 uh, self-destructed last week and destroyed the ship's entire supply of toilet paper. Now, of course, I don't want to make light of all of the people who just lost their jobs at Virgin Orbit a couple of months ago. It was a very serious situation, but at the same time, I never get tired of that particular movie clip. Anyway, also, I want to be clear, and I think all of us know, that Virgin Galactic's fate has nothing to do with Virgin Orbit. Virgin Orbit was operating at a significantly strapped cash situation even before it attempted its launch from Spaceport Cornwall. Spaceport Cornwall was essentially the last nail in the coffin. Virgin Galactic has a lot more money in the bank. Its prospects look a lot more promising. However, 
Richard Branson has lost 1.8 billion pounds in the last couple of years as a result of all the misfortunes his company has experienced. Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit, and especially Virgin Airlines during the whole pandemic problem, he lost a tremendous amount of money and is likely to try to cut loose any organization that isn't producing at least some kind of profit or is at least is not bleeding out a great deal of cash. Virgin Galactic is now one of those companies. It is bleeding out a substantial amount of revenue and needs to start getting revenue on the books very soon, which means this test flight taking place in a few days absolutely has to go well. They cannot afford an anomaly. Does that sound kind of familiar? But I'd like to stress that if this test flight scheduled for no earlier than May 25th does go well, Virgin Galactic has a tremendous amount of business lined up. They have literally dozens of pre-sold tickets, all at a substantially reduced price compared to Blue Origin's New Shepard tickets. We're talking a few hundred thousand dollars a piece, not a few million dollars a piece, which opens up the opportunity of a suborbital trip to a wider variety of admittedly rich people, but not ridiculously rich people. This flight, carrying Beth Moses, Luke Mays, Jamila Gilbert, and Christopher Huey, and I hope I pronounced all of your names correctly, this flight is going to be the defining moment for Virgin Galactic. If it is indeed successful, very next month, actually just a couple of weeks later, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, also known as the VSS Unity, will be carrying a crew of Italian Air Force customers into suborbital space on a test mission that pretty much involves astronaut training and scientific work, not a space tourism mission. That's something I really want to emphasize with Virgin Galactic. They're looking to get a lot of their revenue out of scientific opportunities and astronaut training opportunities rather than exclusively off of space tourism. Those sorts of opportunities opportunities pay out a lot more. It's not an easy thing to get a few minutes in suborbital flight with microgravity for a few hundred thousand dollars or perhaps a couple million dollars. You simply cannot do that on any other spacecraft, except perhaps for New Shepard. And by the way, they are also pursuing these types of missions that will involve a lot more money than just plain ordinary space tourists. So if this mission goes well, and the subsequent mission with the Italian Air Force goes well, and they don't need to do a lot of additional work on the spacecraft between missions, then the floodgates should definitely be opening. Virgin Galactic doesn't need to look for new customers. They have many, many people eager to sign up who have already put money down on their tickets years ago who are going to be looking forward to a flight on the VSS Unity or on her sister ship, the VSS Imagine, which has not flown since it was rolled out in 2021. So a lot at stake here at the end of this week for Virgin Galactic, and I wish them all the success in the world because after all, when it comes to suborbital space tourism, I believe the Blue Origin definitely needs some competition for their suborbital bungee jump experience. I I really think that Spaceship 2 offers a much more exciting experience, especially when one considers the whole alien dropship thing that one goes through during the initial deployment of the spacecraft. That is just crazy exciting, and I have to admit I'm going to be very envious of the people who fly on this ship in the near future. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic and connected to the Virgin Orbit situation, Spaceport Corn Cornwall has lost perhaps its greatest asset, its leader, Mel Quinn. Now, I've gotten to know this lady over the last several years, and I'm here to tell you that she and her team have done a remarkable job for this organization. They have lined up so many new business opportunities with prominent spaceflight organizations, not least of which is Sierra Space, to make sure that Spaceport Cornwall has a future after the demise of Virgin Orbit 
orbit. Now, hopefully, Virgin Orbit will survive in some sort of intact state so that it will be able to pursue its future contracted obligations in Britain, but I kind of doubt it. But as I discovered in an exclusive interview with Mel not that long ago, it appears that Spaceport Cornwall has established a very thriving relationship with a large number of spaceflight and space-related companies, not only in the Cornwall Space Cluster, but also across the Atlantic. As I've mentioned a number of times in the past, Sierra Space is going to be making maximum use of this spaceport for future European missions involving Dream Chaser. This involves cargoes that are 10 times the payload of what Virgin Orbit and Launcher 1 could deliver. Huge, huge opportunities in the future built by this lady and her team. And now she is departing rather abruptly and it would appear not under the best of circumstances. I'm not saying that she got fired or anything like that or even forced out, but at the same time after conversing with her recently, I'll tell you the same thing that I told ITV when they interviewed me about this topic today. Mel Quinn did not leave because she was going to pursue a fantastic career opportunity someplace else. She didn't leave because she wasn't being paid enough. She left because of circumstances that were pretty much beyond her control. And given all of the thriving relationships that she and her team have built with organizations across the planet, I think that this is a significant loss to this fledgling spaceport, a loss that they may have a difficult time recovering from. Now, I want to be clear about one thing. Spaceport Cornwall has amazing opportunities still developing. They have prospects in the future that don't depend on Mel Quinn exclusively. Nobody is indispensable. But at the same time, this was a very, very bad time for this organization to lose its leader who had accomplished so much for this spaceport over the last decade. Stay tuned to The Angry Astronaut for updates on these stories and a lot more in the world of space flight. Also, please like, please subscribe, and also please hit those notification bells so you can be told every time I have a new video hitting YouTube as opposed to being notified by YouTube as to when you should be watching these videos. And as always, stay angry about space.